Hi everybody, it's Will Frampton in Boston. I hope you're doing well wherever you are. We are at the end of a week, another week behind us, another week closer hopefully to the end of this COVID-19 situation around the world. You know, we're all dealing with this in different ways uh, and yet sort of the same ways wherever we are. Many of us are on lockdown under stay at home orders, depending on where you are. And no doubt you've heard a lot of numbers and a lot of stats in the few days, last few days and last few weeks. We are trying to take it beyond that. We have a group of storytellers and reporters now around the world from Portugal to here in Boston to Washington, D.C., Sacramento, California. We are looking forward to sharing with you what we've seen and what and how we're all kind of dealing with uh, this situation as we go throughout our days. We're going to go first to Justine Miller in Washington, D.C. Justine, start us off. What are you seeing where you are? Thanks so much, Will. I'm Justine Miller here in Washington, D.C. I'm actually a New York City-based reporter, but I was traveling abroad when coronavirus really got out of control. I was in North Africa and had to get evacuated by the State Department back here to D.C. So now we're seeing people here trying to abide by all that social distancing, all those other rules, trying to stay safe. And um, I'll be telling you a little bit more about that. But uh, for now, we'll go over to Christina in Sacramento. Thanks, Justine. We knew April was going to be a difficult month in the state of California, and that's proving to be the case. We're starting to see our infections rise. Worst case scenario, the governor says we should reach peak infection rate at about mid-May, but there is another projection out there that says it looks more like late April. We'll talk more about what's happening in Northern California in terms of getting people taken care of, but first let's go around the globe. We're gonna check in with Jordan Lawrence, who's in Southern Portugal, riding out the pandemic there. What do you see, Jordan? Thanks, Christina. Yep, I'm here in the south of Portugal in a small town called Tavira. It's been a state of emergency since the 18th of March, so everyone's pretty much on lockdown here as well. Uh, they do expect the peak around the 14th of April here in the whole of Portugal, but for now, the airports are closed for the Easter holidays, and that's where we're at at the moment. Uh, back to you, Will. Okay, Jordan, thank you very much for joining us, especially, uh, again, across an ocean, and yet we're all going through this together. Uh, Jordan, your stories there in Portugal sound an awful lot like what we're having uh, unfold here in the States. An update real quick from Boston here, as we have been seeing a lot like what everyone else is seeing. Very, very quiet streets. Let's take you to downtown Boston. Near City Hall, it is very quiet here. There is a mandatory stay-at-home order here in Massachusetts. There has been for a number of days now. Let's get back to Justine Miller now in Washington, D.C. Justine, you have a unique perspective because you've been traveling quite a bit, and now you're in uh, D.C. trying to figure out your next move. Will you go back to New York? Will you stay where you are? That's right, Will. Uh, we were traveling for a little while. Now I'm back here in D.C. and we have seen a lot fewer people out. There is a stay at home order here as there are in so many places around the country and the world. But there are still people, you know, going for runs, taking walks, going on bike rides um, down on the mall. Lots of people, but really keeping their social distancing for the most part. It's interesting, though, we actually haven't seen too many people wearing masks. So even after the latest CDC recommendation to wear something covering your face to try and stop the spread of coronavirus. Now, when we were traveling, um, that was a whole different story. So traveling in different places in Asia, lots of people wearing face masks, even as early as uh, in January when this first kind of took off in China. So all over Asia, we saw that. We also saw measures at hotels and airports with um, temperature checks all the time and uh, health questionnaires to fill out, other travel questionnaires as well. What countries have you been to in the last 14 days? It was definitely a very interesting interesting time to be traveling abroad. Justine, a quick follow up. Uh, of course, you, you live in New York City. Will you go back? Will you stay in Washington? What's your plan? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So trying to decide that right now. Um, on the one hand, I'd love to go back and be there reporting on the front lines with so many of my colleagues doing such an amazing job there. Um, on the other hand, obviously, it's a huge risk. So I'm trying to do some reporting from here. But I definitely would like to go back and help with all those efforts there. Yeah, not an easy choice at all to make uh, from your perspective. I understand that's got to be difficult. We're all trying to figure out what's what to do next in all this. Uh, let's take it out to California now. Christina, uh, as we established last week, the West Coast was ground zero in the United States for this outbreak. Uh, things happening every day. The developments keep on coming in where you are. So what's happening in California? 
Well, there's a lot happening in California, Will. The old Arco Arena in Northern California where the Sacramento Kings used to play is being transformed into a 350-bed hospital. It will be state-run for new COVID-19 cases. We are also seeing a surge in infections coming from, of all places, church congregations that have not shut down their weekend services. There seems to be kind of a constitutional battle happening between some pastors in Northern California and the government, which wants them to do more virtual virtual uh, services during the weekend. So we're seeing some of that as well. Um, there is a large portion of those infections happening within the homeless population in Southern California. So down in Southern California, Mayor Garcetti, he's going after businesses that are staying open in defiance of the rules. He has filed criminal charges against about 20 businesses down there. They're also trying to get the homeless people off the streets. There has been about 7,000 hotel rooms that have become available for the homeless population down there. And both in Northern and Southern California, they're starting to move some FEMA trailers in as well for folks who have no place to self-quarantine. Finally, um, we're looking at wildfire season that's going to be starting in Northern California and Southern California soon. Usually CAL FIRE crews would be out doing their training and their inspections and their controlled burns. All of that is put on hold due to the pandemic. So they're kind of holding tight and hoping that fire season doesn't get off to a bad start. We've had a couple of really bad fire seasons. Uh, just an interesting piece of video I want to show you. This is from downtown Sacramento looking at the state capitol. This is, uh, was taken in the middle of the week. And as you can see, hardly a car in sight, no one in sight. And we are seeing these kind of eerie uh, looks at our major cities within our state right now. Uh, just everyone staying at home, doing what they should do. And because of that, there is a glimmer of hope. There are several glimmers of hope. So we'll talk about that coming up. Will? Christina, thank you very much. Um, let's take it on over across the Atlantic Ocean now and check in with Jordan Lawrence. Jordan, uh, it is great to have you on. Thank you for joining us there in the evening where you are. You are under a state of emergency there, but uh, the overall number of infections where you are is not that high, is it? No, it's actually uh, quite good news over here. Portugal really got a handle on this COVID-19 quite early. Um, it's a relatively small country anyway, with a population of under 10 million. Um, but actually, so far in Portugal, there's only 10,000 reported infections, um, 246 deaths in total. As I say, Portugal managed to uh, lock down quite early. Neighboring Spain is in a much uh, deeper crisis uh, with many, many more infections. Obviously, it's a much bigger population, uh, but it spread uh, very, very quickly there. And they were quite shocked um, at, at, at the pace it um, it spread. So the lockdowns are getting quite serious and are already serious in neighboring Spain. Um, but here you can still go for a walk, you can still go for a run because yeah, as I say, particularly in the south here, um, there's not that many infections. As I mentioned earlier, they foresee uh, around the 14th of April to be the peak. Um, and after that, things will slowly hopefully return back to normal. They've already announced that schools will start going back on May the 7th. That's the plan. Um, but who knows, you know, we keep we keep our fingers crossed. There's some really good news coming out of, uh, as I say, neighboring Spain now and Italy and in Germany also um, cases are, are depreciating. Um, so the virus is slowly being beaten back, uh, which is great to see. Jordan, that is phenomenal news. And, and we are starting to hear little hints of that sort of news in various parts uh, in certain areas, depending where you are, obviously many of us are still going to be hunkering down for quite a while longer. I did want to follow up one thing, though, uh, aside from what you're seeing where you are. Let's talk about from a business perspective. You run a global business in the payments and financial technology sector of things. How is the business community handling what's going on right now? Yeah, thanks, Will. So I have a few different businesses, as you know. They're in Atlanta, in Singapore, in Amsterdam and in London. Um, and it's very, very different in each area. Some places have, ta have taken it uh, very, very seriously early and managed to lock people down, such as Singapore. Um, so the infections are relatively low. London, it seems to be a bit out of control. Um, Atlanta also, it seems like people are on lockdown. So it's, it's very different um, throughout the community. What I do see are the fast moving e-commerce and fintech companies still hiring. They've grown global businesses online. So people are still managing to hire remotely via video conferencing. E-commerce companies seem to have pivoted to literally selling in store via video conference. So, you know, Europe seems to uh, have got a handle on the whole 
e-commerce thing quite early. Um, and so business as usual, well, as usual as it can be, seems to be okay for now. Let's see how it goes in the coming months, but for now it's not so bad. Well, that is incredibly encouraging. The economy must carry on, of course. We cannot afford, uh, we all know we cannot afford to lose major sectors as the one you work in, Jordan. Um, so that's some good news. And in general, a, a goal of this segment is to highlight the good that is happening all around us because through all of this, uh, no matter where we live, most of us have seen wonderful examples of humanity shining through, the goodness of the human spirit, right? And also, uh, hopefully some good news coming with regard to the virus itself. Uh, so I wanna go back to Justine in Washington, D.C. Uh, what is some of the good news you've seen, Justine? Yeah, Will, so you know the numbers aren't really that great, but the attitude of the people, that's what I've been so impressed with. They really seem to be coming together with this, you know, we're all in this together kind of attitude, and that's what's been so great. So everywhere we go, you know, people are offering hand sanitizer, they're saying stay safe, they're offering alcohol wipes, you know, they're really trying to kind of be there for each other. That's something that um, is, is really encouraging here, at least in the Washington, D.C. area. Justine, thank you. And uh, Christina, you've also mentioned that there is good news in California as well. What, what can you tell us out there? Well, we are seeing the infection rate flatten in certain areas. That certainly is good news, and doctors are very optimistic. Six Bay Area counties were the first in the nation to issue those stay-at-home orders, and we're looking at the infection rate, the percentage of it, flatten. So we still are getting new cases, but that number is flattening. There was a, a great headline this week that said, bend it like the Bay. And uh, when folks stay home, it shows and it proves that it really does help flatten that curve. So we're seeing that. Uh, we're also seeing that the governor was able to get 100 million N95 masks, and those are going to be flooding into the state very soon for hospital workers, and those are so important, of course, part of the, uh, the PPE shortage that we've seen in hospitals around the country, so those masks will be coming in. And finally, the neighborliness that we're seeing return to society is, is pretty amazing. I mean, people are shut in their homes for all day long. If they do get out and they do see a neighbor from a nice, safe social distance, they're having conversations with their neighbors again. They're putting up American flags. There is an esprit de corps that we're seeing that is coming out of this pandemic that I think, uh, well, that we hope lasts long after the virus is gone. That's wonderful to hear out there. And I, uh, Jordan, I think you can also echo some similar sentiments. Again, you've already touched on it, but I really want to uh, hear more about just sort of a light perhaps at the end of the tunnel uh, where you are. We have a long way to go, of course all over the world, Jordan, but uh, tell us about what you're seeing where you are that, that's going well. Absolutely, and I concur on the, the neighborly points. You know, you're seeing neighbors that didn't even know each other previously uh, actually engaging with each other, you know, um, and what's really encouraging as well is, you know, the local authorities, the police force down here, the municipal police, it's, it's uh, everyone's very, very friendly. They're not sort of enforcing their power and telling everyone to go home in a really aggressive way. They're friendly, they're ex explanatory. Um, so, you know, it's a positive vibe down here for sure. Uh, we've had uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, the world famous footballer, also donate to his hotels um, to, the, to the hospital movement here. I completely concur on that. And I think that's also something that uh, will come out of this in a good way. People will know a lot more people, be a lot more neighborly. And I think uh, maybe some people who've taken that for granted in the past will be thinking, okay, I'll be, a, I'll be a, a better citizen now. Back to you, Will. Excellent, Jordan. And just back here in Boston, uh, kind of what we're seeing here, uh, again, many of us, myself included, have been on lockdown. Um, but a couple of good things uh, from a business owner's perspective that I've seen, just that many parts of the economy are still humming right along. And that, that is the kind of news that we need right now. Unemployment's going to go up, we know that, but we're looking for parts of the economy to remain strong. I've talked with a couple of real estate agents in different parts of the country, one in uh, Metro Atlanta, one in Nevada. Both of them are telling me that they've been busy. They've had new listings come on and people looking to go maybe buy a house right now. So that's an important part of the economy. Also, we, you know, we've heard so much about these restaurants that are struggling right now, and many, pretty much all of them are but they're also offering takeout. And what I'm seeing here in my community, restaurants have their parking lots in some cases packed with people waiting for takeout. And that is a great sign. People realizing that they have to support these restaurants to uh, sustain that part of the economy. It's going to be a long, tough season for restaurants and bars and entertainment venues. 
And uh, however we can support these places, the better. And we are seeing that, I think, across the country, certainly here in the greater Boston metro area. So with that, we'll wrap things up. Uh, again, a huge thanks to Justine in Washington, D.C., Christina in Sacramento, California, and Jordan Lawrence across the Atlantic in Portugal. Thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you again soon as we are able. We're going to try and do these features once a week to check in from where we are around the country and the world because there is good news out there, and we need to be focusing on that as we try and get through this. Again, you've heard the phrase, we're all in this together. So we'll see you again soon. Until then, take care.